Hello. Well, I get a lot of questions about leather sewing machines. So I thought actually it would probably be very helpful if I pop a film up, having a little bit of a chat about what kind of machine could be of interest, capabilities, what to look for, what's needle feed and all that sort of thing. So here goes, leather sewing machines. Most common question, first of all, is do I need a leather sewing machine? And my personal response to that one, and please chip away in the comments below, but will be to say, if you're making the occasional, I don't know, knife sheath, axe cover, gun holster or belt, then I wouldn't bother. I mean, hand stitching with saddle stitch, it's far superior to machine stitching. The stitches lock each other in and it's very enjoyable. You get a lovely smell of the leather wafting up as you work and it's very satisfying to get an even line of stitches. So, as I say, I wouldn't knock hand stitching and actually you do need to bear in mind setting up machines takes time. You can get quite a bit of hand stitching done in the time it takes to set a machine up. So yeah, I would say enjoy the hand stitching. If on the other hand, you're having to make lots of, I don't know, bags or um, knife sheaths or holsters, you might want to consider machine stitching. It's not, in my opinion, as superior, it's not so good as hand stitching, but it is quite effective in, you know, quite a few applications. Now, if you start looking at machines, I think the first sort of hurdle people come to is, well, what sort of machine do they need? and you get people trying to sell you machines which they say do leather and frankly they don't they are domestic machines which can not manage anything beyond the thinnest bit of pig skin so be very careful and i think that immediately links into the next issue leather sewing machines tend to be pretty specific um, you don't really get jacks of all trade um, it's more a matter of you get a particular machine for a particular kind, is optimised for a particular kind of leather weight and thread thickness. So do bear that in mind a bit. I'm not saying you can't get more universal machines, but there's often compromises, so be, be careful on that one. Just to sort of knock the domestic and the industrial comparison on the head, I think of it a little bit like a domestic machine is a bit like a moped and you want to tow a caravan and a, an industrial machine is more like a lorry or big car to tow a caravan. The industrials are powerful. I mean, the motors on my machines are one horsepower. The, if you have clutch motors, they're that sort of size. If you have servo motors, okay, they are a lot smaller nowadays, but the motors, motor for motor type, are a lot bigger on an industrial. So it's got the power, it's got the pushing power. On a domestic, it, as I say, it will struggle. So personally, the only domestic type of domestic machine I would consider would be something like the, the old Singers, the 201K model. Um, used to be advertised to punch through tin cans, which it could do quite well. Um, some of the modern domestic jeans type machines are okay, but you really are talking only about very thin leather and you're talking about thin threads. It won't manage thick stuff. So I say, be wary of that. As you get into the industrial side of things, you do need to sort of think about what kind of sewing you're going to do most. I mean, I've got a flatbed, which in theory can go from quite a thin thread up to really very thick thread, but that's not that common. And generally a lot of the machines are optimized for either thicker threads or thinner threads and that's all relative of course but I mean for bag making um, I mean perhaps if I illustrated actually I popped a film up on my beautiful old harness making machine the Singer 133k it's a wonderful power beast of a machine that one I have sold it on now um, the person who now has it wanted it for things like thick veg tan and axe covers and it will be superb for that I wanted to sew calf leather bags and therefore I wanted something slightly more lighter, slightly more refined in the sort of thickness of stitch it does. So I've, I've gone for different machines. And I think that's probably says it all really. I'm trying to sort of make this point because I think it's very easy to get the wrong machine. So do think about what you want to sew. <laughs> um, 
If you're not certain about machine sewing, a good option actually is to get an old, as I say, um, an old Singer 201. It's, um, you can pick them up dirt cheap. I mean, I got my one for £20. I got one for a friend in a nice cabinet for 50 quid. They are cheap if you look around and they do punch through quite well on the thin stuff and i think you'll see it in i think a pole lathe case making film i popped up and one or two others where I'm, I'm using it so it will cope but you are limited by the thread thickness the next or general hobbyist all around a machine i like is the singer patcher the old cobblers type machine the one with a nice little rocking beam on top of it and again i've popped a couple of films up on what that machine can do I think my main sort of issue with that machine is a nice machine, but the bobbins are very small. So if you're doing volume stuff, you'll get a bit frustrated constantly changing bobbins. Although actually the long arm variant does have a long, you know, a larger bobbin. So those, if you like, are the two probably accessible entry machines. I think beyond that, you're getting into more serious kinds of machines. And what I would say the most important thing to look for um, in generally speaking is to get something which has walking foot and ideally compound feed now just to try and explain <laughs> without sort of going through in great detail but a walking foot machine is one where you sort of have a, a foot of the machine pressing on the lever walking along next foot presses next foot presses it down so the whole time your slippery lever is being pushed down by a machine foot and that actually sort of ho holds the lever in position better and it gives it a more even transit through the sewing process so that's a walking foot what you ideally have is a machine which is called a compound feed and that will have your bottom feed dog the little sort of toothy bit dragging your lever through you'll have like your walking foot holding that lever down as the sewing cycle goes through and you'll have the needle feed now <laughs> when i first heard the term needle feed i thought what on earth is needle feed does a needle pop out from somewhere all it is it's like a walking needle so the actual needle instead of going straight up and down it actually goes forward a bit stabs and then pushes the material through by pulling it back so it's a, an action of forward stab push back the whole time so that combined with the walking foot and the bottom feed dog gives you three things dragging your slippery lever through the machine so that's the compound feed you will find people give all these slightly different terms slightly different names but if you look for things like needle feed or compound feed you'll hopefully get the right sorts of things and i for example i use one of my machines um, it's a flatbed and that's compound feed and I find it absolutely superb for going through nice bits of calf leather. I like, as you know, servo motors because that's the other thing with an, an industrial machine you've got a choice between a clutch motor and a servo motor. And the clutch motors are, uh, in my opinion, loud, noisy and run rather fast. I like the control of a servo, it's quiet, you can slow it right down and if you need to sort of increase its power you can put some extra pulleys in. But I think they're great and I've put all my machines now onto servo motors for that reason. So yeah and then I think generally just in terms of machine types as I say make sure um, you look at needle feeds, compound feed type machines and consider what you're sewing take samples along to whoever's selling a machine try it out and actually see if it does what you want it to do and the one sort of thing i've taken from sort of industrial machines generally is that yes you, you get machines that will cover the whole range but they tend to be best at particular thicknesses of thread so i'm using ones now as i say which are optimized for medium weight threads for bag making. I think they're great. And then I suppose you're really just down to, um, do you get a clone or an original machine? And I think I'll do that as a separate chat actually, both of their advantages um, and disadvantages. 
So I'll, I'll pop that perhaps with, along with woodworking cloned machinery at the same time. So yeah, a few thoughts there on machines. Um, places like Leverwork and Net have a lot of information on machines and buying guides and that sort of thing. And it's worth doing a bit of research across the internet, across YouTube and what have you. So anyway, hope that's helped and thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.